Hey guys, it's Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and you're listening to the Front Row Entrepreneur Podcast with our girl, Jen. Not long ago, I attended the Kajabi Impact Summit in Irvine, California, and Brendan Burchard said that if you don't have recurring monthly revenue, you don't have a business. He said that if you can't go on vacation for three weeks and still have revenue coming in, you don't have a real business. And if you think about it, he's kind of right. It doesn't mean you have to have a membership site, but a membership site is one thing that is very easy to create and makes a lot of sense for those of us in the online space. And if you look around, everybody seems to be going towards a subscription model, right? Dollar Shave Club and Instacart and Amazon Prime and Netflix. But as obvious as this model is, it took me about a year to finally make it happen. My dear friend, Catherine Dove, kept urging me to do it. She kept telling me that I was ready. I already had a fairly large online community in my Facebook group, The Front Row, where I was already cranking out content pretty regularly, but I just wasn't sure where to start, what to include, what to charge, how to separate free from paid. But now that I've had a membership site for two years, and I cannot believe it's already been that long. I have learned a lot. And today I'm going to share that information with you so it doesn't take you an entire year to get your membership site going. And I'm also going to offer you the complete transcripts of this episode because it's going to be loaded and a checklist of everything that we talk about. Just text the words front row membership to 44222. And that's all one word front row membership to 44222 or go to jenlaner.com forward slash membership. So let's jump in. First, in case you don't know what I'm talking about when I refer to a membership site, I'm talking about any sort of online program that you create that you sell to subscribers. They pay you a monthly or an annual fee and in return, you provide them with content and community. Sometimes just content, sometimes just community, but I think if you really want to be smart about this, you're providing experiences on top of content and community. And we'll talk more about that later. The first thing I learned is that you don't have to have a ton of content to start. In fact, I would say that most people are sort of overwhelmed by all the information that's out there. You can literally start with just a few trainings. For example, these trainings can happen live using a platform like Zoom or Google Hangouts, and you could be the person who does the training, or you can bring in a guest expert or many guest experts. You can just offer monthly or weekly coaching calls, and that's your membership site. I think that's what Rachel Hollis does. Then the replays can go into a special vault too, that of course will accumulate and create quite a rich library of content. I'm not sure who said it, but people come for the content and they stay for the community. And man, have I learned this to be true. I think you can offer a membership site that doesn't include a forum or a Facebook group, but honestly, I personally haven't seen many that thrive without one. That's because the community is where the magic happens. And I have some very good tips for you on how to create a community. The first one ties in with your pricing, actually. When I first launched my membership site, the Front Row VIP, I started with a low price of $27 a month. And I knew this was a no-brainer price because I was offering so much, which actually wasn't the smartest idea in the world, which I'm going to address that a little later. So I included two brand new courses. One was about Facebook ads. The other was about Messenger bots. I was offering two monthly coaching calls plus other live meetups and mixers. And by live, I mean on Zoom. And there were two Facebook groups, one for the general community and another one that I called the micro economy, which was just for their promos and for members to practice their pitches. In addition to this, I offered lots of other tutorials and some special events. So I knew that a charter member price of $27 was a no brainer offer and that, that I would eventually increase the price. Like that was the, that was the long term goal. That ended up being the smartest move that I could make. And here's why. Two years later, I still have the majority of my original members. And I think that has to do with a couple of things. One is founders 
charter members have a special bond to each other that I was very deliberate about facilitating, actually, right from the get-go. Right after I closed the doors on that first enrollment, I scheduled a Friday mixer. Members showed up on Zoom, and of course, we could all see each other's faces the way that you can on Zoom, and I went around the room and asked each person to share two truths and a lie. In the chat, members would guess the thing that they thought was the lie. So there was all this conversation going on in the chat and it really ended up allowing us to get to know each other pretty quickly. We were laughing and we all were sharing. It was really great. In the Facebook group, I facilitated this by going live regularly, answering questions, shouting out the wins of our different members. And because I did a a very thorough job at intake and onboarding and learning about each of the members, I'm also able to be a connector. So I could say, hey, Francis, I think you need to meet Mary because you both are show dog people. I don't know, but you get the idea. The group was so on fire, actually, and everybody was so in love with each other that when I decided on a whim to schedule a high ticket live beach retreat just for the members of the membership site, it sold out in about 24 hours with members coming from Australia and Norway and all over the United States. I was completely blown away. And the other reason to start with a no brainer price is that it allows you to create a real sense of urgency when you launch. You're able to say, Hey, I'm offering this low rate to charter members. And as long as you stay a member, the price will never increase. But once enrollment ends, the price is never going to be this low again. As you begin to open the cart in the future, your charter members see the price is continuing to increase and they're even more inclined to stay in your group. I have raised my price twice so far from 27 to 37 and then from 37 to 47. And I'm not sure if I'm going to stay at 47 or increase the price the next time that the doors open. I know the value is there because in addition to the content and the community, I provide experiences. So let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. I mean, I'm actually going to create a whole podcast episode about experiences soon in that It's going to be all about how we're living in the experience economy. And I think that notion first took hold back when, as far, I mean, as far as I remember, back when the Shawshank Redemption movie came out and Morgan Freeman talked about his bucket list. That term was not part of our lexicon prior to that, you know? And you see this reflected in our culture everywhere from the takeoff of Airbnb and kids taking gap years. We're all yearning to just get more out of life, right? More experiences. So along those lines, I think when we differentiate our businesses by creating experiences for our customers and clients, we are really setting ourselves and them up for success. We are really differentiating ourselves. Some of the experiences inside of my membership include challenges. Our most popular challenge is the accountability challenge that happens in the spring and in the fall. Members basically show up twice a week for just a few minutes to check in on the goals and tasks that they have set for the four weeks that the challenge lasts and they earn points. It's really simple, but when they do this challenge, they get so much accomplished. They rave about it. I could also leverage this experience with enrollment. In fact, we're in the middle of our spring accountability challenge right now, and I actually kind of forgot that I normally open the doors for enrollment around the challenge. So when I remembered, I just opened it up for 48 hours prior to the challenge so that people could join in on the fun. And it gave me something, when I do this, it gives me something other, something to talk about in in a way of selling without saying, join my membership. It was, don't miss the spring accountability challenge. And then I got to talk about the challenge. And then on top of the challenge, everything that they get with VIP. and. To launch it, I just sent out one email and I did a couple of social media posts, no big stressful launch, and it was a huge success. Other types of challenges are when I take a training or a course that's already in the membership site and walk members through the content in a live setting. So for example, there's a course about messenger bots in the membership site, but 
members ask me to teach it live and break it down for them. So that's exactly what we did. They showed up on a Zoom call or a Facebook Live, asked questions, and then they were given homework assignments to complete. So I basically like chunked it down, broke it down bit by bit, step by step, and they could ask me questions. It was it was great. We did the same thing with a live funnel building workshop. It took place over the course of a couple of weeks, but it was bite-sized lessons that helped my members to achieve something. Unfortunately, if you don't help your content to come alive with events like this, it's just going to sit there. And if it just sits there, your members won't achieve anything. And if they don't achieve, they leave. Oh my God, TM that. If, if they don't achieve, they leave. Go ahead and tweet that out, would you? My handle is Genergy. It's J-E-N-R-G-Y, but with only one E. So we also do co-working sessions. This really takes no time at all for me because I already carve out usually 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. as undisturbed creation time in my business every day. So it's really no big deal for me to host the co-working session on Zoom, invite members to come in and join me. It's just really a fun way to come together and work, sort of like study hall in college or in high school. So we're not really interacting with each other. We're just sort of next to each other. And somehow this really helps with productivity and just that feeling of not being so alone and isolated. Another experience that I've incorporated into the membership is what we call Plating Palooza. And this happens at the end of most months. We come together again via Zoom and I walk everybody through my entire signature content creation system with a really great workbook. And people are actually creating their content for the entire month and sometimes two months ahead. They really love this. Again, people don't want just information. They could get courses on YouTube and Skillshare and Udemy for pretty cheap or free all day long. Another thing that I've learned is that if you have a free group or community, you should leverage that to grow your paid group. Here's how I do it. Well, actually, first, let me tell you what I don't do. I don't promote my membership constantly in my free group. That would just be annoying. But I do assume that everyone in my paid group is in my free group. So if I have just uploaded the replay of our live Q&A session into the membership site, I'll post a summary with timestamps of the questions that were asked in the Q&A. I'll post that in the free group. And when members of the free group click on that link, they'll be asked to log in in the membership site. But obviously, they cannot do that if they are not enrolled. So from time to time, I will do this with our other events as well. I often get asked, how do you decide what to put in the free group versus what you put in the paid group? For me, I might teach something live in both group groups. So in other words, I'll go live on Facebook and be live at the same time in both groups. And I might be doing a tutorial of some sort. If it's a very in-depth training, the replay will only live in the paid group. But ultimately, I think the answer is about access. The more direct access someone has to you to be able to ask you questions and get help, the more likely it is to be something that you only offer in the paid group. Also, it's not just about what content you offer, but how you offer it. So for example, I send out a collection of everything that happened in the group, any new trainings, any shout outs or congrats or welcoming of new members in a weekly email. This makes it really easy and convenient for your members to access your content. And sometimes this is the most valuable thing of all. People hate to dick. People want convenience. I know I do. Earlier, I mentioned to you that I learned that offering too much in your membership site can be as bad or even worse than not offering enough. You see, when you're first creating your membership site, you're thinking, oh my goodness, I have to provide a ton of stuff or people won't join or they'll join and then they're going to leave me right away. The best way to think about your membership site, in my opinion, is just like your entry level offer, especially if it's a 27 or a 37 or a $47 a month offering. I've been recently, I've been, I've been working with a client recently who's starting a membership site and she is, she's going down that path and she's like, and I'm going to do one-on-one calls with all the people who join and, and I'm going to do group calls and, 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 and I thought, and I, and we talked about it and I said, if you offer all of that, how is, how and why would anybody pay you more down the road? So once people get to know how great your work is and they become part of your community, 
and they join your membership site, those are exactly the people who will want to join your small group coaching programs and your one-on-one coaching programs and even your live event. But if you offer all of that, again, for $27, why in the world would they pay you more? You're already giving them everything you have. So what I'm saying is leave room for growth. You truly do not need a lot to start your membership site. One or two live calls a month, the promise of great trainings in the future, a strong community, a couple of unique experiences, and you're ready to roll. Another important thing I've learned is that you must have a very, very strong onboarding process if you want to keep these members. That means that no one can ever get lost or worry about where to go next when they join. You want it to be as obstacle-free as possible. And this is something that we're constantly working on and developing in my own membership site. You have to assume that, and I do this with all of my content creation, really, you have to assume that everybody is in kindergarten. You need to be so super clear because just because it seems obvious to you does not mean that it's obvious to them. So for example, the minute that someone joins, they should get an automated email from you that welcomes them. And in that email, you need to cover all the things you need to include, like your top 10 most asked questions, sort of like an FAQ, or who to contact if they need help, or what is the calendar of events? Where is the calendar of of events? Every single thing you could think of should go in this email. I always tell the story that When I first opened up my membership site, there was a woman who joined who literally was in my membership site for a year before she actually knew that there was a membership site. So she thought the Facebook group was all I, all we had going on. And so she was so delighted to see, you know, this treasure trove of content that that was available to her. I also have automated emails to send out for the whole first month of their membership because I want to make sure that they're taking advantage of everything that their membership has to offer. Remember, if they don't achieve, they leave. One of the biggest things that really slowed me down when I was trying to decide how to move forward with my membership site was actually what platform to use. At the time, I was using Teachable for my courses, but after looking at other membership sites that were on Teachable, it just didn't seem like the right solution. Finally, and again, from the urging of my dear friend, Catherine Dove, I decided to use Kajabi. And I honestly don't think my site would be as successful as it has been. And by successful, I mean that I was able to generate $100,000 in revenue in just the first year. And I would not, I don't think I would have been able to do that if I hadn't used this platform. And that's because Kajabi is actually a complete all in one business system. So that means they, they do everything. So you can, you can get rid of your email service provider, your landing page provider, your SAM cart, your webinar provider, like everything. You can get rid of it all and you can create courses and funnels and your membership site and a website and landing pages, literally everything. And they have the best customer service, 24-hour support. If you want to take a look at Kajabi, I put a link in the show notes at jenlaner.com slash membership. It's actually a link to a free course slash challenge about how to create an online course in 28 days, but it'll help you with setting up a membership site too. And it includes a link to a free 28-day trial of Kajabi. And if you end up signing up through that affiliate link, I'm also going to be available to help you as you move forward. Having said that, you should know that there are successful membership models that operate with literally just a Dropbox folder, Zoom calls, and email, and that's it. So just give careful consideration to what you want and what you think is going to serve your clients before you pick your platform. So in closing, let's just review the main lessons that we've learned today. First of all, You don't need a lot of content to start your membership site. In fact, make sure you don't offer too much so you have room for growth. Having a community is very, very important. Start with a no-brainer offer and then raise the price, never returning to that original low price again. Create experiences. You don't have to start off with as many experiences as I offer, but get creative and think of some things that will really surprise and delight your members. Have a very, very strong onboarding process. 
And finally, choose your platform carefully. I hope you have found this episode helpful and I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to send me your questions and comments to jennifer at jenlaner.com or tweet me at jenergy, J-E-N-R-G-Y. And don't forget to grab the transcripts and the checklist by texting front row membership to 44222. And that's all one word, front row membership to 44222. And if you like listening to this podcast, I would so appreciate your reviews over on iTunes or wherever you get the front row podcast for entrepreneurs. See you next time.